Bowman's Kenya is the Kenya office of uh, Bowman's, uh, which is a Pan-African law firm, formerly known as Bowman Gilfillan. Um, it is a, a preeminent firm in uh, South Africa, one of the largest firms. In 2008, um, the firm um, had a strategy to uh, become a Pan-African uh, law firm um, with uh, offices in key uh, jurisdictions in Africa. Uh, it, the first jurisdiction was Kenya, uh, which was the, the, the birth of Kulsan Hani in Kenya. We are now uh, in Uganda. We are in um, uh, uh, Madagascar, which serves Francophone Africa from Senegal to Ivory Coast to DRC. Uh, and we have a, a, a full office also in Uganda, in Kampala. Uh, uh, our plan is to open more offices um, in East Africa and other hubs in Africa, particularly West Africa, which we hope to execute in the next uh, 12 to 18 months. Um, currently, the, uh, the law firm, the Pan-African law firm, um, has uh, approximately 150 partners and approximately 400 fianas, fian which makes it one of the largest firms in Africa. Um, it's, it is very unique in the sense that it is a truly integrated law firm, um, by which I mean each of the offices are operationally integrated in terms of their systems, in terms of their uh, knowledge uh, sharing, in terms of the, the look and feel. Uh, and in terms of how staff uh, interact uh, with each other. Um, on the 1st of September, um, we uh, decided that uh, our brand uh, needed to show what we are, and we launched our new brand, which is Bowman's, um, uh, with, um, uh, and, and standing for um, uh, something we call value of knowing, mm -hmm. where we have in-depth uh, presence in key African jurisdictions where we have local deep knowledge. Um, as far as international law firms are concerned, we work very closely with them. We have very strong relationships with the large global law firms uh, who we, we, we see as our, our, our key partners and we work closely with them in America, in Europe, uh, in Asia uh, and elsewhere in the world. Uh, they don't have the depth that we have in Africa. Uh, we do, and that's why we work very closely together. So when an international client wants work to be done in, uh, in, 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 in Africa, in Kenya, in Uganda, in Tanzania, in South Africa, or wherever, uh, we can offer them a one-stop shop with one point of contact. Um, so they, they have a consistent quality uh, and ease of doing business here. And of course, from a cost point of view, it becomes uh, more effective uh, for them. And talking a little bit about just the Kenyan office, um, uh, as I said, Kulsan Hani, um, which is a strong name in Kenya itself, was formed in 2008 uh, uh, by two partners only, uh, Richard Hani and Philip Kulsan, um, who are still here with us. Uh, uh, and from a firm which had two people in 2008, eight years later we are now the largest law firm in Kenya with um, close to 80 lawyers and 16 partners and serving uh, the entire range of services that any business would want. Um, from mergers and acquisitions work, um, dispute resolution, conveyancing or real estate, banking and finance, projects, intellectual property, employment law, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, in the eight years that uh, the firm has been around, we are now um, uh, recognized internationally by the global lawyer recognition uh, directories like Chambers, uh, Legal 500, IFLR, etc., as the top firm, in, as, as one of the top firms in Kenya, and certainly um, in, in, in certain areas, we uh, are head and shoulders above uh, the other law firms in the region. We are the only law firm today in Kenya with three, what we call Band One ranked lawyers um, uh, in, in, in the corporate area, uh, which which is um, something that we're very proud of. Our advice uh, has been um, uh, very simple. The law is, is clear that there has to be a cap for, for, for borrowing and a floor for, for deposit uh, interest rates. Um, so that concept everyone has 
understood and agreed to. The gray area is, is there are several gray areas in this law. And unfortunately, because the law is the law, mm -hmm. and the interpretation is, 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 is always different from one person to another, it, there are many areas where, where, where there is confusion. The first one is, what is the base rate? Now, for that, we have now got clarity from the central bank that the base rate is the central bank rate. Um, um, again, if you look at it very strictly within the letter of the law, you could argue it is not. There is KBRR, or indeed you could argue there is no rate. There is nothing like a central bank rate. We have the MPC rate and we have the KBRR. The law actually says the central bank rate. So you could argue that it doesn't even exist. But it is what it is. I think practice has overtaken that, inter the, that, that debate and everyone is now um, uh, following the central bank direction. So I think that air has been cleared and, 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 and by, by action or by practice that has become law. The problem is in several other areas. What do you do with insurance premium financing? What do you do with LC financing? What do you do with dollar loans or non-Kenya shilling loans? All these are gray areas. We don't have an answer to that. Our advice has been in our view, the law applies to Kenya shilling lending um, and, and, you, uh, and Kenya shilling deposits. Um, it would be very bizarre to think that the law would apply to foreign currency deposits or foreign currency lending because that would actually shut this economy down mm -hmm. if you try to do that. Um, as far as the other kind of uh, non-core banking type m banking products or, or rather not the plain vanilla lending products like insurance premium financing and so on, um, one could argue that they are not loans and they are subject to their own charges and so on. Um, and there's also been a debate about the, the smaller loans, the emshwaris uh, of the world. Although again, I think practice has overtaken that debate with equity coming out very clearly and saying this is what we're going to do as far as those loans are concerned. Um, there was a debate that there was no interest charge on that, there were just charges. Mm -hmm. Yesterday the central bank has made it very clear, we're not going to allow um, uh, you, know, you to replace interest <laughs> with charges. Um, uh, and and the, the law on charges was always there. The central bank has to approve any bank charges anyway. So, unfortunately, Ching, I can't give you a clear answer. Uh, I can't give any of my clients a clear answer. What we can tell them is, 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 is to stay within the law um, as much as they can. And I think where there are gray areas, what we are saying is to engage with the regulator and to engage as a banking sector through the KBA um, um, and work together with the government and the regulator to make sure that this transition happens. My personal view, interest rate caps or regulation is not good. Any kind of regulation like that is not good. We are a free market economy. We are very proud of that. Um, uh, I certainly hope as the dust settles, cents will prevail, caps will, will go away, but banks will also bring their rates down. Um, just for, for pure market reasons, demand and supply reasons. Banks have to become more efficient. Uh, and, and that should happen. But the government has a big role to play in that. Our judiciary, our registries need to be become more efficient. Corruption has to go. The reason why borrowing is expensive in this country is because we have inefficiencies. We have corruption in those areas where borrowers don't pay and it takes a long time to recover money, if at all. The government borrowing has to come down. Um, uh, the rates at which government borrows has to come down. As a bank, why would I lend to the man on the street without any security at just two, three more percent than I can lend to government at zero risk. It doesn't make any sense. Mm. So there are a lot of macroeconomic factors, a lot of structural things that need to be sorted out. Mm. Um, the intention is good. Mm. No one is saying interest rates should be high. The intention is very good. But this is, personally in my view, not the way to do it. Yeah, and I think, well. I, think, I think my view is probably shared by many. Yeah. Uh, for us. Mm. It means that that um, the investment that we have made is going to pay off. Mm -hmm. We are going to be um, uh, involved in many more deals, many more transactions, uh, basically a lot more work for us. Uh, it will also mean that <coughs> when, where, where there's a lot of work, our lawyers mm -hmm. will, will develop much faster. So, so for me, it is, uh, we are very excited about this. Uh, and we are, we are gearing up to that. We are hiring people uh, all the time to get ready for this. We are trying to attract the diaspora out, outside Kenya to come back to work in Kenya uh, in the legal profession so that we are, as we are developing now and as we are seeing all this demand for legal services, uh, we, will, we, we, will be, we will be very well placed to deliver that. Uh, it means, you know, business is going to be great for us. I think we are going to grow. Uh, um, 
maybe not as fast as we have, but now we have a much bigger base. So of course, when you have a bigger base, growth is in number terms might be slightly slower, but we, 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 we have every intention to keep growing. Um, and lastly, I would say we, we, will, uh, we, we see all this work translating into regional work, which will mean that we are going to uh, do a lot more in Tanzania and in Uganda and other neighboring countries. Um, uh, already we have an office in Uganda. We are soon to open our own office in Tanzania. Uh, and we see that close integration in East Africa going, being very positive for us here and for us as Bowmans in Africa. So we are very optimistic that uh, this is going to lead to, to a lot more fees for us, basically, um, and, and a, a good growth for our firm, mm -hmm. uh, locally and regionally. Yeah. Um, Ocheng, um, uh, our regulations and our law in Kenya uh, regarding the legal profession are very clear right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we are a Kenyan partnership called Kulsan Hani. Uh, we have no intention of changing that. We have every intention to keep complying with the law. Mm -hmm. However, as I've said, uh, we are operationally integrated into the Bowman's family and we see ourselves as a pan-African law firm, um, but with a Kenyan legal unit, mm -hmm. which, is, which is a Kusan Hani partnership. Uh, eventually, if our regulations allow and if the law allows, things might be different. Mm -hmm. um, until such time, Kulsan Hani is still Kulsan Hani. However, we want people to understand that we have ambitions in Africa. We are African. We want the international clients to understand that we can deliver services from Kenya in the rest of Africa. And that's why we want to have this Pan-African brand. So it might appear that it's, it, it looks more prominent on our letterheads and signboards and so on. That's how we want to be perceived as an African law firm. It is a logo. Kulsan Hani is still Kulsan Hani as a legal entity and will remain so. Um, so we'll see if the, the, the law changes, mm -hmm. things might be different. Yeah.